Hi folks, welcome to our 2018 road trip to Sweden. So we spent the last couple of weeks just heading north to southern Lapland to do the wilderness route. And we spent pretty much every night just wild camping in the forest, sitting around the campfire, trying to keep our eyes open for the northern lights, or to see if we can see a glimpse of a bear or a moose. This trip has thrown everything at us. We've had sub-zero temperatures, snow, wind, rain and even a bit of sunshine but it's been a fantastic journey hope you enjoy the series After a few long days of motorway driving we eventually found ourselves on the forest tracks of Sweden The previous night we had camped on the western shore of Lake Vernon before heading north through the village of Torsby and on towards the Norwegian border once we'd set up camp, we began what would become the daily ritual of collecting firewood and practicing our bushcraft skills. It was getting cold in Sweden at this time of year, and a campfire was an essential part of making a trip like this as comfortable as possible. There's a big old fallen pine here. I'm going to try and get myself some fat wood, which is like a natural um, fire lighter. And you can usually find it at the ends of these branches where the sap runs back into the trunk after the trees died. I'm not sure if this is going to have any but I'm going to have a go. Yep there's some there. You can see it's quite dark inside. If you can see there, that bit in the centre. It's got quite a distinct smell as well. So uh, I'll take that back to the camp, get the axe out, chop the wood off from around it and maybe use it to light the campfire with tonight. So it's a bit of work to get yourself some of this but um, it took us about 20 minutes to get down to this little section of fatwood here but it's uh, it's quite useful stuff. A lot of the bushcrafters will carry it in their backpacks or in the pockets. They'll shave a little bit off, it's really flammable. Um, just get a spark on it and it uh, makes, makes life easier when you're trying to get a fire going. So I'll uh, put this to the test in the morning I think with a ghillie kettle. The following morning we continued our journey north, exploring some of the forest tracks along the way. We were on the lookout for a source of flowing water to top up our water supplies. One of the problems with wild camping is that it can be difficult to find sufficient amounts of water to keep you going between the occasional visits to organised campsites. However, in Sweden it is safe to drink flowing water straight from the source. Apparently there is no need for filtration or purification. Although, I have to admit, I was a bit sceptical about this at first. Later and a half there, but it looks like piss. Look at the colour of it. I don't know if I'd drink that straight from the river mine. But I'll boil it up and it'll be useful for washing up. Well, we found another great place to wild camp. This spot's great. Uh, 
all we're doing to, to navigate is we've got a Marco Polo map of Sweden and on that map there's thin grey lines and they tend to be unsealed roads so we're just looking for an area where there's a few of those then we, we've got the Google Earth um, app on our phone you can get that on and just and just have a look where the tracks go I mean this one leads through it's about I would say maybe it's about six kilometers seven kilometers long and it just leads up there's a reservoir down there that leads up there and it's a dead end I guess they're all just old uh, logging roads you know that's probably what they, they were built for but the I mean my Garmin sat nav even picks them up so you can just come on them you can have a drive around and you can camp as well someone's obviously been here before us there's a a fire pit over there so it's just a good opportunity to get out uh, and see a bit of nature and because we're at the end of September beginning of October the place is empty as well all the summer tourists are long gone you've just got to be prepared for the cold which we are Yeah, it's a real struggle in this forest it's really dense um, and all the dead wood that's lying on the ground is just rotten because there's a really thick uh, bed of moss everywhere and it's really damp and you can see here I'll use this top bit in the fire that's dry enough but this bit there it's just all rotten it's no good Well, we went to bed about nine o'clock last night. We had a half decent fire. Um, the dark was coming in, so we climbed up in the rooftop tent. And we were hoping to see uh, a bit of wildlife walking up and down because some hunters have put a salt block up the top of the trail there. Um, but we didn't say anything. But during the night, uh, I could really, really feel the temperature drop. And we woke up this morning and everything's um, frozen solid. It's a clear sky. 
so the temperature must have dipped below freezing last night you just see the sun coming up over there though so uh, looks like it's going to be another decent day but in the tent um, we don't have a sleeping bag we've just got a duvet just a normal duvet that you have in the house and we've brought along a, a couple of wool blankets and that's fine during the night I mean it's really really warm in the tent um, I wear a pair of thermals and then that's, uh, that seems to be enough really we do have these kind of fleece snoods which you pull over your head I didn't have it on last night but I wish I did so I'm going to stop bringing that up into the tent with us but um, yeah I'm not really a big fan of sleeping bags unless you get the really big thick bulky ones I always find them a bit cold but then again I think if you sleep on the ground you always get a lot of cold coming up from underneath you don't have that problem with a rooftop tent so we find even in these temperatures minus one minus two or whatever it's really really warm up there so you just need to be careful with the condensation anyway I think we're gonna get a bit of breakfast on and then continue our journey up north uh, we're gonna visit a, a waterfall today hopefully if we can find it and then uh, head on up to Lofstalen I think so let's see how it goes So we've been driving for a few hours now um, it's pretty slow going up in Sweden it's a bit like Scotland the roads aren't very quick and they're a bit twisty so it's taken us a while to get up here it's about half two already and the, the sun is starting to sink a little bit but we're in the uh, Fuller Fallet National Park and there's a waterfall about two kilometers into the woods so we're going to get some exercise and go and check that out, aren't we, Trace? Yes, we are. But it's uh, yeah, it's really cold. I mean, we started the day off freezing, and it hasn't really got much better. We left the Fulu Fjallet National Park and drove back south for a couple of miles and found another great place to camp by the edge of a lake. We didn't want a wild camp within the boundaries of the National Park as there are certain restrictions in place which we wanted to respect. It had been another cold day so we got straight into our routine of collecting some birch bark to start the fire and scouring the forest floor looking for some decent firewood to keep us warm throughout the evening. There was a lot of branches lying around, but trying to find some that were dry enough wasn't easy, as most of the wood was either damp or rotten. We would have to walk into the forest and search for wood that hadn't been lying on the forest floor for ages. But the gathering and processing of firewood at least gave us some decent exercise on a daily basis, and as the journey progressed, we would find ourselves using the fire more often to cook food on. On the menu tonight was the classic campfire baked potato. Once the firewood had been gathered and processed, we could sit back and enjoy the solitude, keeping warm and eating well as a result of our labour. And as the sun began to set, I couldn't help thinking that the American author and outdoorsman, Edward Abbey, was onto something when he claimed that wilderness is not a luxury, but a necessity of the human spirit.
that was another good wild camp there just got up early for a bit of a mooch through this this forest here so yeah I honestly didn't expect it to be this cold to be fair I knew it wasn't going to be like um, autumn back in the UK but I don't know if, you, if the camera's picking it up it's actually snowing at the moment very lightly but it's uh, it's snowing and in the night it, it does it gets down to must be at least minus two I think woke up this morning and the um, water supply that we have on the back of the bumper that was all frozen solid so yeah it's definitely getting cold and we're still you know we've still got quite a, a journey to go north so let's see we're heading into Lost Darling today there's a campsite there so probably going to check in there for the evening because we need a shower um, there's no way I'm getting a shower in this weather I mean there's plenty of water around which I could heat up and get a wash but it's just too cold so we're going to head into Lost Darling see what's, uh, see what's going on up there I think there's some shops in that we might be tempted to buy another blanket for the rooftop tent <laughs> So I've just pulled over for a quick uh, cup of coffee we filled a flask this morning because we had a uh, an inkling that the weather might deteriorate and as you can see behind it certainly has we're on the way to Lost Island um, the main roads just down there and I think that's going to be clear but this track that we're coming off now there's a good couple of inches of snow on it and as you can see all around it's it's beginning to get a blanket of white I just hope that this uh, this isn't going to be it for the foreseeable days. Um, snow's a bit of a nightmare, but never mind. We'll crack on. It's beautiful though. It's got that Christmassy feel about it already. <laughs> so we've just arrived at Lost Island campsite. Um, the place is it's deserted really. There's a telephone number at the cafe at the top of the hill. So I had to ring the woman, she gave us the code to the toilet and they've got this lovely kitchen and sink area here. The heating's on. Um, it's really nice actually, it's a really nice campsite. There's a, a massive uh, shower block and toilet block just around the corner. There's a sauna in there as well. Um, and the weather's just totally miserable, it's snowing outside. It's about minus one. Uh, I think this weather's going to be in for a couple of days, so we might hang around here for a night or two well definitely for a night but perhaps two nights just to, to make use of the facilities really we ended up staying in lost darlin for two nights we were spoiled with the hot showers and the warm amenities block to sit in lost darlin is a popular winter ski resort in the southern region of the swedish mountains and it's also famous for its local bear population but the temperature didn't get much above freezing during our stay but we managed to get around and explore the village and the surrounding area and we made the most of the facilities during the evening but the time came to push further north and in the next episode we make it onto the wilderness road and into southern lapland thanks for watching